Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to watch a clip where Peter Beck gets confronted on Yahoo Finance about misrepresenting the neutron timelines. Uh, this is a recent accusation that um, was leveled against Rocket Lab and it certainly looks like if you have been following my tweets uh, that it is coming from, and, and my videos, uh, from Rocket Lab competitors who want to basically bid on the contracts that Rocket Lab would get if they do complete this mission uh, before the 15th of December. And mind you, these are possibly in the billions of dollars of launch contracts that Rocket Lab could get in uh, lane one or two, I don't remember, it's late in the evening, of phase three of the NSSL uh, launch program. So his answer is very amazing. Plus they talk about other Rocket Lab uh, stuff. So it's important for us as Rocket Lab investors. So make sure that you're subscribed, like the video, all this good YouTube stuff, and let's begin watching. Oh, and Peter, uh, it's good to talk to you today. Uh, there's so much attention on this Neutron launch, which is, of course, the medium lift uh, rocket that you're looking to launch by the end of the year. But um, I want to get your reaction to a report that came out from TechCrunch, which, by the way, is owned by our uh, parent company, Apollo, as well, um, sort of suggesting, you know, they cited an internal congressional memo that said Rocket Lab essentially overstated its ability to be able to deliver on this launch by the end of this year, saying essentially December 15th was put as the target date so you could be eligible for these lucrative contracts that come through from the Space Force. I want to get your reaction to that. How much credence do we put in that and how credible is that launch target December 15th? Yeah, well, thanks very much. Um, but look, uh, I think, um, you know, clearly we've got the attention of our competitors um, and, um, you know, I take a, take that as a feather in our cap uh, that, uh, you know, you know, people start throwing mud at you. So, um, look, we're, we're working super hard to to try and get the vehicle to the pad by the end of the year. I think everybody knows that. Uh, but we're also being, being realistic that it is a launch vehicle and it's a launch vehicle program. And, um, you know, if everything goes well, we'll get it to the pad. And if we, we have issues along the way, then um, then, then we won't. But, um, you know, at the moment, we have a, a schedule that says we can get it to the pad. So until until that changes, we're not waving the white flag. So I loved how he answered here. I love about this company and hate also at the same time that they are zero PR, zero fluff. They really tell it as it is. And I was actually surprised by the uh, congressional memo, because if you just listen to their earnings call, they were just saying, look guys, it's a rocket program. Many things can go wrong. Currently we have a timeline uh, that makes it so that Rocket Lab is going to be, or, or Neutron is going to be standing on the pad. But if anything goes wrong, any tests go wrong, we're not going to make it. But we have no reason to update the timeline because currently the timeline seems to be working. And he said the same thing here. And this to me is not misrepresenting. It's actually stating exactly how it is. and. As I said in an earlier video, probably this attack comes from, uh, or maybe not even the attack, because I also see many retail investors that are very, suspi not suspicious, but maybe anxious about if Rocket Lab is going to be able to deliver Neutron. And by the way, uh, it is a moment of worry for us retail investors, because in the last earnings call, they said Rocket Lab cannot be profitable without Neutron having flown. And Neutron has a lot of growth baked into it, a lot of potential new uh, contracts. Uh, there's a lot of spending that goes into Neutron. So if that is that gets delayed six months or one year, that means that profitability gets delayed six months to one year. You know, po probably then it will go over budget uh, and so on and so on. So it's to our utmost interest as Rocky Lab shareholders that they, you know, come close to that date. I, I am expecting a little bit of delay just because it's a rocket uh, program. And, uh, you know, if 18 things have to go right to make this happen, uh, almost based on the number of probabilities, there's no way that all those 18 things are going to go right. But I'm hoping that they will be able to launch like January, February. And that that for me is still on time as as a uh, rocket rocket uh, program. So what I wanted to say is there's two points where people are really, really worried. So one of them is usually when uh, new rockets test engines, it takes years uh, before the rocket actually flies. Uh, 
but here, in many interviews, Peter Beck have said that the engine is the least innovative part uh, of the rocket. So they're not trying any new technology that hasn't been tried before. And the logic of their engine is that they're going to have a very capable engine, but they will have it on a very low uh, thrust or, you know, barely use the engine. And that is to make it reusable. And that, I think, also means that there is a like much fewer things that can go wrong because think about it like if you're throttling down the engine you know the temperature doesn't go that much up the pressure doesn't go that high up and you know the the different components of the engine get you know barely used so this is why i think that they are not so worried about the engine test and i'm also not so worried about the engine test and it should happen actually uh very soon at the end of uh march so it's like two three weeks away uh, and that would really cement the timeline of, of Neutron if, if they uh, get this successful test. Uh, so I'm not worried about the engine. The second part where the worries come in is uh, that it's not them necessarily building the pad for Neutron. It's the Virginia Space Authority and they have uh, these public uh, bids for proposals. And if you read this, you can see that some of the public proposals uh, finish the pad in November 15th. And I think that there is like some storage units that finish in December. So that means that Rocket Lab would have like less than two weeks to, you know, like put everything onto the pad and, and you know, get ready for a launch and fly Neutron. And that is an extremely uh, tight time. Now on this one, uh, they said on many videos and many uh, demo parts that, um, Neutron is going to be like a very simple rocket that is, you know, just on, on the launch pad. And uh, somehow the launch pad is going to have uh, a connection to the to Neutron to fuel it and, and do different things. And what I'm trying to say with this is maybe there's a workaround that the, the pad is partially ready and they can stand Neutron, they can fuel Neutron and maybe the storage facilities they uh, figure out in tents. Uh, just like SpaceX has done with the uh, Starships, I don't think that that would be so hard. So even if the pad gets delayed, uh, they can still do the launch. This is this is my thought around it. But the the schedule that they have for Neutron is definitely tight. But they are saying it as it is. So now let's continue with this interview. So let's talk about some of those challenges in getting there. Um, you've highlighted in the most re recent earnings call about this new engine that will be used in Neutron. That's kind of the next step, getting the test going on that. What does that timeline look like? You mentioned potentially end of March. I is that schedule still on track? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, engines are typically the, the long on the tent on any new launch vehicle development. Um, we've done everything we can to to try and uh, remove the you know the, you know the, the stress out of the engine and the engine program. So you know we'll, we'll look to have something on the test stand, um, yeah, hopefully by the end of March, and then um, that's that's when the rubber hits the road. As we'll see, we'll see how um, how the engine performs, and uh, we're kind of at that that honeymoon phase right now where we have a lot of hardware uh, all coming to fruition. You know we've completed all our avionics and hardware in the loop and. A lot of the, the software and testing. So now's that time when all that hardware comes together and, um, and we, you know, we get to see what we've really got. It's been pretty incredible to, to see the ramp up and just commercial activity um, within the space sector. Um, Rocket Lab itself trying to own sort of that full stack from satellite to launch. You've got Electron already, you know, really sort of humming along. Neutron, this medium lift rocket is next. Other offerings in the works as well. Um, what does the future of Rocket Lab look like? Mm. Yeah, no, it, it's it's funny because uh, everybody knows us for our electron launch vehicle. You know, it's the second most frequently launched rocket behind SpaceX, fourth most frequently launched rocket in the entire world, in fact. Um, so, not surprisingly, everybody knows us for for our for our rocket programs. But actually, two thirds of our revenue come from our space systems division, and you know, we we have over forty satellites in build. Uh, some for uh, very important national security missions uh, like the SDA uh, and, uh, you know, and some for uh, commercial constellations. Then we have a merchant supply business of space components that, uh, that you know, it's far reaching across the entire industry. In fact, you know, 37% of everything that was launched last year had a Rocket Lab logo on it somewhere. 
So, like I say, we're, we're well known for our rockets, but you know, we uh, we, we pride ourselves on being a one-stop space shop. So, uh, we do everything from uh, the initial design and supply of components through to actually building the satellites, through the launching of the satellites, and then just yesterday we uh, we had an event for uh, the methane set where we actually operate uh, that satellite for customers as well. So, really, an end-to-end -end space company. Peter, you mentioned, you know, you have the second most launches behind SpaceX. Um, last I saw, I mean, SpaceX is launching rockets, what, once every three days or something, if you kind of break down the, the annual number. Um, what's the target for Rocket Lab or, or how long until you get to that kind of frequency? Very good question. Yeah, so Electron this year will launch around about 22 times. Um, so, you know, that's, a, that's a, a marked step up from last year, which is about 10 times. So we have, uh, we have a rocket on the pad sort of every, every couple of weeks. Um, so far, when you look at sort of the breakdown of the space industry, so much of it has been about rockets and satellite communications. Um, we recently saw the successful reentry of um, Varda's space capsule, which, of course, uh, Rocket Lab designed. Uh, this is a capsule, for those who haven't been following, that allows for space manufacturing. A lot of that in pharmaceuticals as mm. well. And I wonder when you think about the future of this industry, does it get to yeah. a point where it's not just about being a rocket company, you know, sort of an aerospace company that, in other words, pharmaceuticals, you know, health and wellness, everybody will have to somehow participate in it because it is going to be at that intersection. Yeah, absolutely. And, and look, we see, um, you know, businesses that, that typically haven't had anything to do with space becoming, you know, quite reliant on it. And, you know, our, our view that the large successful space companies of the future are not going to be solely a launch company or solely a satellite manufacturing company because the sheer power of when you combine those two elements together i mean space is a, a, a giant engineering compromise if you will so if you can if you can you know both add launch and space systems together then uh, you can provide services that, that that are far superior than than you know if you're doing it in a more traditional sense and we see more and more companies come to us and they have no knowledge of the space industry, nor do they want to, uh, but they just want a service. Um, and I think that's where it all boils down to. So the reason why we're pushing so hard on Neutron is, you know, 50% of it is that, look, we, we absolutely think there needs to be uh, some more competition in the market um, in the medium launch area. And uh, secondly, you know, we want to provide services and having your own ride to space or having the keys to space is critical to that. Peter Beck, Rocket Lab CEO. Always good to talk to you. Really appreciate you. So very good interview overall. And I really liked, for me, the most important part was the beginning uh, about Neutron. And I really liked his answer. And I think after listening to the Q4 earnings call, uh, knowing what we know that, you know, Neutron is a key point in profitability for Rocket Lab. Uh, I th and plus that they are not signing contracts until the engine test is done. Uh, Neutron is very, very crucial to the stock. And definitely if there is delays, it will hurt the stock very, very much. And if they're moving on schedule, it's going to make the stock moon uh, or be a lot higher than it is today. So definitely have to keep a close eye on it. Thank you so much for watching. If you feel you got value out of this video, uh, you can join the channel membership or Patreon. There is the same perks on both of them, which is pretty much nothing at this point. You just get access to my uh, valuation models of Palantir and Rocket Lab and some others that I will upload there. It's mainly supporting the channel, uh, which I'm very thankful for if you do. Uh, but the most important thing is that you're here and you're subscribed and you watch the videos. So thank you for that. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.